it's time to continue working on the dungeon scene now I just wanted to show you the assets that I've got so far uh, and their textures all right I've done a little bit more work on the jail cell here I may get rid of this brown there but I've got the the concrete foundation there this sand here is probably just a stand-in unless I decide I really like it and I've placed some objects here and there and done a little bit more work on the portal uh, I guess that's what it is and so I want to texture that now for you uh, similar to this all right so once I texture that you'll see how I did that all right so over here in substance painter this is what I've got all right, I brought it in and I'm going to bake the mesh maps now at 2K uncheck ID and let it go. Okay, there we are. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn on anti-aliasing. And you'll see that I've got three materials. I've got portal chains, that's that stuff. The concrete, that part's gonna be concrete and that all that stuff is going to be the metal. So really the, the chains and the metal will be the same. All right, so I'm going to come over here to my smart materials and start typing in dungeon. I'm going to be using the same metal that I've been using all along, uh, which is the metal that I made earlier. And that'll help keep things consistent. So I've thrown it on there and I'm going to put it on here. And I can pretty much leave that other than maybe upping the resolution. We're going to come over and turn our attention to the concrete. I'm going to come to materials and type in concrete or start typing concrete and choose this concrete simple. So that's what I'll be starting with. I'm going to come over here and I think I'm going to change the scale to maybe 1.2. And I may give this a more brownish color. Uh, this part is up to you what, what color you want to use. I'm going to start with something like that. And all these colors can uh, can be changed uh, later on. Okay. I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to change the color of this and make it a little bit lighter. All right. I'll add a black mask and a generator. And for the generator, I'm going to choose this one over here this curvature all right let's just have a look at that all right so we're going to get these edges here and for a few values here i'm going to try uh bringing this to about let's bring the contrast up first we'll make that zero point four and let's try 0 0.35 for that so that highlights the edges right there with this the same uh, material okay good all right let's uh, add some more detail to this let's add a fill layer a black mask and add a fill to that and here let's search for let's see if I can find dirt 5 there it is like that come up here and change this to triplanar I'm going to change the scale I'm going to try 15 it's quite small now back on the main layer I'm going to use just height and roughness. I'm going to put the height at about 0 0.25. Little bit of height for sort of like sand grains. I'll bring the roughness all the way up. Let's go back in here there now. And let's play with the balance. Let's try 0 0.75. Okay, it's very subtle. Let's bring the contract up 0 0.22 and let's see what it's like with and without. And just barely see it. Now, 
I'm going to change this to 2k and then it should be more evident there okay this this stuff right there all right so this is going to be I'll call this dirt 5 that's the, the map that I used for that all right let's do another fill layer and again we're going to use some height and roughness I'll put this at maybe 0 0.2 and we'll put the roughness all the way up we're going to add a black mask and a fill and in the grayscale we're going to search for scratches and I'll use this scratches rough throw that in there and I'm going to decrease the scratches length and I don't really like that and so I'm going to random and actually I think I'll put this as negative 0 0.2 there, that's better and then you can play with the scratches however you like to do them I'll do another random you can decrease the balance I just want a few scratches in there okay so scratches oh, that looks like I'm using capitals now all right the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to come over to my materials and I'm going to search for rust this coarse rust I'm going to take that and I'm going to drop that right on top I'm going to add a black mask and I'll search for smart masks let's see ground dirt I might try that one let's bring that one in there and we'll just start to see a little smattering of it here and there let's come into the mask editor and let's play around with some of these values here let's uh, let's switch this to triplanar Right, so we have a little bit of that there. Increase the contrast there. I'll just bring that up a little bit. Okay, so we have some of that there. Last course, I'm going to do that again. We'll switch this to triplanar. Add a black mask and a generator. And this time I'll try the dirt generator. Pull that down. I'll make the dirt level. Zero point five eight. And I'll make the contrast zero point seven. I'm going to come back to the first rust, click on that, and I'm going to darken it a little bit. come back to this one I'll darken that one a little bit as well but just not as much here's what we have so far 
I'm going to consider adding a layer of dirt on top of this. Color and roughness. Bring the roughness up. Color down to a almost black color. A black mask generator and the dirt generator. And bring the level down just for a little bit of dirt on it as well. All right, so we get that dusty dirt and we get that that um, rust in there as well. Okay. Now we can always go back and change the uh, the color of the the concrete if we want down here. I might take this and just darken it a little bit and that will make the highlights show up a little bit more. It looks a little bit green, so uh, that's something to play with when you've got the time uh, to do that. All right, those are the main layers, and now what I also said is I would put some cracks in here in um, Substance Designer and bring them into Substance Painter. So I'm going to save this and then we'll jump over to Substance Designer and have a look at that. I'm going to choose New Substance, the PBR Metallic Roughness, um, workflow or graph template and I'm going to name this cracks video and I'll switch this to 2k for both of these and I'll leave everything else the same and click OK so uh, we won't this isn't going to be a real tutorial on substance designer but you know this is the graph workspace and these are various nodes and stuff and what I'm going to do here for this we're not even going to need a bunch of these so I'm going to select those and delete them and the only one I'm going to leave is this base color node that we'll use as our output later on okay so we're going to make some cracks essentially we're going to be making black and white alphas and so we need um, a shape of some sort to start this off so I'm going to press the space bar and I'm going to search for uh, noise and I'm going to try this creased one down here. So I click it and it loads the noise, the, the, uh, the noise and we see a preview of it here in the 2D view. All right, so in order to get a crack out of this, I'm going to click on the output, uh, left click and pull, and then release. And then that'll bring up this window and I'm going to search for cross section. Just start typing that cross section. And now you can already see this black and white um, thing, this cross section of some of this, so that's that's great. I'm going to make some changes over here. Let's change the drawing style to gradient mirrored, so it's up and down. Now it looks like something from some ER or a hospital uh, movie. All right, so we're going to do that, and we can play with the height offset just to get it in the middle. And I think I'm going to leave it at that for now and we're gonna move on. What I want to eventually do is just isolate just a white line and a black background. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out and I'm gonna search for high pass grayscale. And now I'm gonna get this white area here and I'm gonna put in a value of something like five. And then we'll see what happens with that in the next, in the next step which is to really make it black and white. So I'm going to pull out here and we'll use a threshold node. So far we don't see anything. We have to play with this value. We're going to get it over 5, so I'm going to go 0 0.505. And now you can see this stuff here. I'm going to switch to Y here. I'll pull down this height scale and then bring the height offset up and now we have something that's a little bit more manageable as some kind of a crack here so as I play with this height scale you can see how that's affecting the overall height I can try X or I can try Y something like this and that looks kind of like a neat, a neat crack right there. All right, so I think I'll leave that there, but I don't want it to go right to the edges. So I'm gonna pull out here and I'm gonna search for a transform 2D. 
and now I can transform this. So I'm going to hold this corner and hold shift and control and just pull in just a little bit. So, so it's shrunken down, but it still bleeds over the sides. So I'm going to come back to, to let's try it here. And let's search for tiling mode. Let's put this as absolute and choose no tiling. And I'll click off and now it's cut off at the edges. So we, it, it won't go off to the, to the sides. So that's looking pretty nice so far. Let's do another manipulation. Let's pull out and search for bevel. And that's too strong. So we're going to start pulling it down. We're actually going to go into the negative. We're going to go negative 0 0.02. We'll try that. There we go. All right. So you get this nice look. Now we could leave it at that. And I'm inclined to do that. Um, or we could add one more little bit of noise to that and I'll show you how we could do that. If I pull out and I look for a slope blur grayscale, I drop that down, you'll see there are two inputs here. There's an input for a slope here and what that takes is generally a type of noise or a, a gradient. Uh, if I search for clouds too and I make the scale something like four, try four, and I plug that in here and then double click. We don't see anything anymore. We've lost it. Well, let's bring the samples up and bring the intensity down quite far. Really, we're going to go to about 0 0.1. And then I'll zoom in. You can see all these notches it's taken out of. All right, by having that. So that really splits it up. Uh, if I get rid of that, Okay, it just looked like this. And then putting that in makes it more jagged. So it's up to you if you like that, if they like that. Look, that's all we really need to do. I can plug this now into here. And at that point, we start to see it in the 3D view. But all we want is this, really, this black and white image. So let's give it a try like this and see how it's, how it's worked. All right. Let's come over here and save as cracksvideo.sbs. That's the designer file. And this is the graph here. And I'm going to right click and choose export output as bitmaps. Well, the only output we have is a base color node, this one here. If we had normal and ambient occlusion and all those, they would show up. And you could either use them or uncheck them. For our purpose, we want essentially a black and white alpha. So I'm just going to leave that one checked. And you can choose your destination and the format. I'm just going to use PNG and it's going to come into my Substance Designer uh, folder. So I'm going to export outputs. Export is done. Close that. Now, I'm going to come back to Substance Painter here. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to make just a paint layer. And in the properties, I'm going to use just height. I'm going to drop it down to about midway. So let's bring that alpha in. So import, add resources. I'm going to come to Substance Designer and I'm going to look for what was this called? Cracks Video. Cracks Video and its base color dot PNG. So I'm going to select that, open. I'm going to define it as an alpha and I'm just going to use it in my current session. I'm not going to put it on my shelf and import. Double click and increase the size and move this around and there's my crack let's, let's give this a try let's just click down there and there's the crack all right so I don't particularly think I'm going to be using them here but I just wanted to show you uh, that that's what they could potentially look like Okay, and at this point, we are pretty much done with the texturing of this. It's time to bring this back into Blender and set it in the scene and see what else we need to texture, what else we need to model, and we'll do that in the next video.